It's UK TV G2, you can tell it because it says it there. We have Top of the Pops 2 and the Dram of the Cops to come, but first it's a double dose from the Sporting Fools. And for once, Jonathan's not the only Campo. Could be run out. Everyone's been busy earning an extra penny over the summer. Gary's had a new Walkers campaign. Jonathan's been promoting on digital. Rory's been doing car voiceovers. While in the Gower household, we find this from the Berwick Advertiser. The co-op as advertised by Mrs Gower. <laughs> Don't worry, David, if she wasn't available, they were going to ask you. <laughs> With David and his new regular sidekick, Jonathan Ross, is one of the greatest rugby players of all time, the legendary Campo who held aloft the World Cup for Australia. Campo, holder of the World Try record. Campo, famous for his 20-year infatuation with Nora Batty. <laughs> Australia's <laughs> David Campesi. <laughs> with Gary and Rory is a comic whose career began when he was asked to do the warm-up for the late Jonathan Ross. Imagine his disappointment when he discovered it was only a programme title. <laughs> Julia Simpson. <Yeah. laughs> We kick off the show by investigating the pathetic excuses given by sportsmen to explain away their performances. David, Jonathan and David, it's World Cup rugby for you. At the Five Nations and in the World Cup final, France were rubbish. But in the semi-final, they caused the biggest upset in the tournament's history. Here comes Dominici. He's got round the defence. Randall's chasing. He's no chance. Dominici to score. And France take the lead. A race to the line. Bernard Sarr's going to win it. And that puts France's place in the final. France trailing in his wake, here goes Owen Finnegan, he's looking for support, he doesn't need it all the way to the line, and Owen Finnegan seals Australia's triumph in style. So the Australians won the cup, but why, according to the French themselves, did they do so well in London against the Kiwis? David's team. You think the fact that the French stopped eating beef fed on shit was possibly a factor? <laughs> <laughs> The early stages, they were still waiting for the British and the Americans to parachute in and bail them out. <laughs> <laughs> May I take this lull in the conversation to point out that I'm somewhat Hang disappointed on, with you, Hancock? David's talking, it doesn't necessarily lull. <laughs> <laughs> it's, not it's not the definition of a lull in the conversation. <laughs> He's wearing one of his granny's cardies, look. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, you know, how blind have you got in the last six months? Well, there's no. a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, I'm very disappointed in you. It's frankly yeah. saddened, and I feel you must be chastened on Why this is subject. That, sir? You kick off the first of the what we represent the jewel in the BBC Sporting Crown. <laughs> you kick off this show with an ITV sports show. Uh, shame on you. With an ITV shame on you, oh, you, you wave faced oh. poltroon. You could have chosen from the many fine BBC <laughs> sports still available. We had some fantastic under 16s badminton coverage this okay. summer. <laughs> the the, the show paper me has never been stronger. <laughs> But you guys, one, you must be filled, you one, you're Australians, despite the fact that when we dropped you off, you know, years ago, the comics, we thought you'd wind up eating each other. Now, here you are, you, you, you're doing quite well with oh, your yeah. sport. Hey, that's it. You're the ones that sent us out there and we start to beat you everything, so... You're no good at darts, though. <laughs> you got the darts. <laughs> you know, oh, Phil Taylor. <laughs> that's... Yeah, but... Stokes Phil Taylor to you. So we haven't looked close to the right answer yet. Come on. Well, the right answer is, I'd say, is that the, uh, the French captain said that they had nothing to lose and they wanted to go out there and show their flair and passion, which I haven't shown during the World Cup, and I think they had a couple of bottles of red before the game. <laughs> David, is uh, rugby in Australia the same as is in England? Is rugby any sort of homosexual game in England? Is it the same, is it the gay game? <laughs> <in> the, uh... <laughs> Roy, <laughs> just because his nickname's Campo. <laughs> <laughs> is it because, um, nice uh, going on with the, with the World Cup and, and thing, that they thought that, OK, you know, we're on a winning streak and we'll do it because we're French. Right, I will give you a bonus point yes. for that. Oh. <laughs> Bad luck. Then he said rules. virtually the same thing we said. He just said flinch, and you gave it. <laughs> that was the key word I wanted. Flinch. <laughs> 
Well, according to French what captain Raphael Ibenet, the only explanation is <laughs> that we are French. Ibenet went on to say, we treated this game as if we were going to war. So, half of them surrendered, half of them joined the other <laughs> side, <laughs> and two of them spent three years hiding in a cellar. <laughs> The New Zealanders also had an excuse, saying they lost because their national anthem was sung beforehand in English and not in Maori. That and the fact they were all knackered from doing bar work the previous evening. <laughs> 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 Gary, Rory and Junior, we take you back now to last summer's Open Golf Championship, when all Francis Jean van der Velde needed to win was to finish the final hole in six shots or better. However... I don't believe it. This is... This is so, 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 so sad. What on earth are you doing? Somebody kindly, let's go and stop him. <coughs> Give him a large brandy and knock him down. To attempt to hit the ball out of there is pure madness. So what excuse did he give for rolling up his trousers and wading into the water like that, Gary's team? Huh? He's French. <laughs> He's correct for three points, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Because there's loads of sports where black people take part in, you know, and there's boxing, football, athletic. We get golf. We've got what, what, Tiger Woods? Only one. All right? And he's even say he's not black. And then you give me Vijay you. Singh. Don't worry, it's not Vijay who? Singh. Vijay Singh? VJN. VJN. Yeah, VJ. V yeah, VJ Singh. Singh. Doesn't sound like a brother to me. You <laughs> <laughs> just said black. <laughs> it's anything else. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be... <laughs> you don't play this in Hackney, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> But, it, but if you did, that's what the call yeah. was. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should boycott this question. Don't you think we should boycott this question about the French? Yeah. yeah. See, I've stopped stealing French wine from Sainsbury's. <laughs> <laughs> I've stopped sending baby dead seals to Bridget Bardot through the post. <laughs> You've already got the three points anyway, so don't worry, your first answer is entirely correct. Mm -hmm. According to Jean van der Velde, the only explanation is that I'm French. <laughs> van der Velde saw the funny side of his exploits, and that night he and his friends enjoyed a traditional Basque celebration. They sung Basque folk songs, drank Calvados, and left a massive car bomb outside the Carnoustie Hotel. <laughs> and so, at the end of that round, David's team have no points, but Gary's team have four. <laughs> We crack on with our sporting bluff round where the teams try to work out which one of the other team is telling the truth and which two are speaking with forked tongues. Gary's team, your subject is Sheffield's finest, Prince Nassim Hamed. And here is His Majesty back in the days when the BBC had some boxing. Great body shot from Nassim Hamed and Gargano's not going to get up. That's another victory for Naz. Five wins out of five. He's got real style and he could certainly be going places. Now... Although he got an invitation, Naz was not present at the event of the millennium, the marriage of David Beckham and Posh Spice. David's team, tell us why. Prince Nassim Hamad missed Posh and Beck's wedding because he wasn't allowed to somersault into the reception. Uh, he missed the wedding because he was angry at the idea of them sitting on thrones. Prince Nassim Hamad missed Posh and Beck's wedding because he was told he couldn't wear leopard skin. What was the first one? What did you say, um... David? Somersault, wasn't it? Somersault. I know, because Beckham and Posh would think that's uh, between Devon and Dorset, wouldn't they? Somersault. I <laughs> <laughs> wondered if you could have called her Posh Spice, but is she? No, not at all. She's not Posh? Not Posh at all. And she's worth 25 million? Yeah, that's right. Tomorrow I'm going to change my name to White Man. A funny name for the baby, haven't they? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Oh, that's right, yeah. It was named after the place where he was conceived. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Apparently. Which is why my first child's called Ali. <laughs> 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 and my second child's called 745 to King's Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> With one of the longest middle names, calling it Finsbury Park Stevenage. <laughs> I've heard that she sings sort of, you know, lullabies to him. Uh, well, she doesn't sing, she mimes them and, and Sporty Spice comes in. <laughs> <laughs> he wanted it to be formal, didn't he? You know, ladies in skirts, men in skirts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that, no. Yeah, roughly, yes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's the You think it's Jonathan? Was. Let's see if Jonathan was telling the truth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah. <laughs> So, Jonathan was being truthful for once. Naz was so knocked at being told what he could and couldn't wear that he decided to give the wedding a miss. 
Posh Spice has hit back at critics who have called her husband thick, pointing out that he beats her at trivial pursuit. It's the only household in Britain where the phrase yellow piece of cheese is a right answer. <laughs> David's team, your subject is the young Gary Lineker, seen here opening his account for his beloved Leicester City back in 1981. To Wilson, a good ball, Lineker coming round the back. <laughs> Gary Lineker's first ever goal in the first division. So now here's Lineker. 1-1. One -one. Lineker gets his eighth goal of the season. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you terrified. look great, man. You look great. I'm... <laughs> now, we all know him these days as the suave, unflappable, second-rate substitute for Des Lynham. <laughs> but, but when Gary was a young whippersnapper, he had a different ambition. So, Gary's team, what did the former king of the three-yarder hope to do when he quit the game? Uh, Gary's dream after retirement was to run his own market stall. Okay. My dream after retirement was to become a bookmaker. Gary Lineker's dream after retirement was to open a bar in Spain. So, was it Gary Lineker's ambition to become a stool holder, a bookie or a barman? Before we start, can we have a look at that picture again? Can we have a look at that picture at the end there when he was, yeah. he was running triumphant? And he... <laughs> You've had a nose job, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> you have had that nose cosmetically reduced. <laughs> Imagine him going to the plastic surgeon, walking through the door and the bloke going, oh, yeah, I know, it's the ears, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you'd think you'd start there. Or is that where they put the excess? <laughs> is that the only thing that shrunk, or is Michelle unhappy at home? <laughs> well, well, I mean, when, you, when you're young, obviously, you, you've just come on the scene and somebody asks you a question and you say, oh, well, I want to be what my father was, or something like that. Well, yeah. his dad was a, did run a stall, didn't he? Although that's what he told you in the daytime, whereas we all know that he was the, the best-known <laughs> pimp in Leicester. <laughs> He was, no, he was very highly thought of in the business. <laughs> so he'd sneak off for you wearing his tradesman's clothes, out the door, boom, on goes the full-length yellow Mac and the big hat with the feather in. <laughs> Went off to look after his bitches. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the Leicester tourist guy there. <laughs> Best team in Leicester, Mr Lineker, also known as Huggy Bear. <laughs> Don't you have a go at mine, Dad? Yeah. I'm not having they a go. I am praising him. They were looking for some highlights of your TV career but couldn't find any. Boy, yeah. Yeah. Maybe if my dad had had a job like a pimp, I would have done better as well. <laughs> Pimp's clothing on. Yeah, exactly, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the hat outside. <laughs> OK, well, so you've got, you've got a father with a market stall, brother's got the bar, all your England colleagues with bookmakers. We reckon it's the market stall. You reckon it's the market yeah. stall? I think Junior, it will be. Did you say it, Junior? Yeah. OK, let's see if you're right. <laughs> Oh. In fact, back in the early days of his career, Gary confessed to Shoot magazine that when he gave up the game, he hoped to become a bookmaker. He also revealed that his favourite newspaper was the Daily Star. <laughs> now, if you think that was an ill-advised admission, another Leicester player, Alan Birchnell, in the category, which person in the world would you most like to meet, replied, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> if still alive, or Neil Diamond. <laughs> I mean, a man responsible for that much misery and Adolf Hitler. <laughs> At the end of that round, David's team have no points and Gary's team have seven. Hang on, UK TV Gold, and an hour later on Gold Plus One. In our next round, we'd like to know what stories lie behind a pair of recent Premiership goal celebrations. For David's team, a goal by Derby County's Rory Delap, with a screamer against the arse. <laughs> That finds Iranio, and here is Beck. Oh, good challenge by Keogh. Comes to the left! Oh, fine goal by Rory Delap, who now has a special celebration with Daryl Powell, and everybody's getting involved. So, David's team, why all the finger-wagging? They oh. just scored against Arsenal. That's your team, isn't it, Rory? Yeah. Do you think they were mocking Rory's odd white afro hairstyle? By the <laughs> white afro hairstyle? You've got the afro, you know, which is normally not found on the white gentleman. <laughs> It's not found in the brothers these days, either. <laughs> well, I don't get out so much. <laughs> DJ Singh's got one. DJ <laughs> Singh? <laughs> no, he hasn't. I played golf with him in Acne. <laughs> I actually like yeah. to know what these soccer players do at training. I mean, they get a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And they kick a goal and they do these stupid things on the field. Well, sadly, we don't have a soccer player here who, who's ever been to training. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Okay, and on that subject, do you actually understand Sorry, the rules of rugby? No. No. <laughs> Does anybody? No. No. I think they're the referees don't need They're called law. <laughs> what do you put down the Malays in British sport to, David? Those Australians are doing so well. All those Malays. Well, actually, just do you think it's just. On, uh, <laughs> just before I came on, on the show tonight, they, uh, they showed the Australians arriving home and uh, they went through. We got the rugby union, we got the rugby league, uh, we got the netball. Uh, Ooh, we got, uh, <laughs> we, had, we got the crickets. We got so many great sportsmen at the moment. But the heavens. you haven't got your own head of state. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, you know it's rings and roundabouts, isn't it? <laughs> so once upon a time, you guys tried to take over the world. You know, you had Falkland Islands and all that sort well, of thing. <laughs> Please, sir, do not forget from whence you sprang. <laughs> If it were not for the mighty loins of the Englishman, Irish. Yeah, old, Irish. where would you be? Well, you'd no, be I'm out in potato my still. My father's Italian, my mother's Irish. So I'll tell you what, uh, if you weren't such a big bloke, I might get quite physical with you. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard you say exactly the opposite before now. <laughs> you are kidding, aren't you? <laughs> you wish. I reckon you're it's about five inches. <laughs> It's not stopped him before, you, has it? I reckon you look quite good in those uh, Aussie real shorts, wouldn't you, if that stomach? Watch it, out? Skippy. <laughs> <laughs> You can push me so far, hey, Australian man. We're on the same side here. All right. We're on the same side, remember that. Can anybody remember right. the question? Or... Nope. No. <laughs> no. It was Wall, you wasn't it? Mr. Delap there, Mr. Yeah. Delap dancer. Um, yeah. <laughs> may we have another peep of the gentleman in question? I think so. Okay. Maestro? I suspect then that, like most uh, footballers, he's using this moment in the limelight to refer somewhat obliquely to a masterpiece of modern 20th century art. <laughs> Capturing so beautifully the sense of isolation and fear in Edvard Munch's passage of Scream. It still brings tears to my eye the time I saw Gascoigne do Whistler's mother. <laughs> Beautiful That mother. never got in the papers, right. did it? That's what he's doing, he's doing the Scream. They're all doing Edvard Munch. Next week, Monet's Water Lilies. Are we going to hand it across? Any ideas? Fucking useless. I think so. Oh, Tell us, gal. Oh, you prick. I can't believe it. <laughs> How many points do you need? <laughs> Is it from a computer game, alien thing? No, it's happened. not close enough. Here oh. are Rory Delap and teammate Daryl Powell to explain. Spencer Prey came up with this game called Aliens, and I'll leave Daryl Powell to explain it. The um, game what Spencer devised was a drinking game, he said, and none of our players drink. Um, but he described it, he said it's called Aliens, and he said the man in the middle is the alien, puts his hands up, the man to his right has to put a shield up, and the man to the left has to put a shield up. And we were playing along, we found it a very mature, entertaining game. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like we're all saying the word aliens. It was, at any rate, a drinking game called Aliens. Derby's most famous chairman was Robert Maxwell, until they went under. Oh, no, sorry, that was him that went on there. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, no point. So, Gary's team, we go back to August, and a goal by Aston Villa's arch-poacher Dion Dublin against West Ham. Really good play by George Jim, and he's found Dion Dublin, who's found some space for himself, and who scores a lovely goal, beautifully made. A polished goal, by the looks of it. So, Gary's team, while well, the head rubbing. All I know about um, Dion Dublin, apart from he played for Cambridge United, of course, is he's apparently got a very big, um... NUB! Apparently <laughs> <laughs> it's like Marvin Hagler in a roll neck sweater. <laughs> well, it's not fair, cos as a black man you don't get the chance of doing the comb-over thing, you know, if you go bald. You know, you get a big afro at the side of your head and really moving... <laughs> <in>. <laughs> <laughs> Was he doing an impression of, uh, David Beckham thinking of two things at once? <laughs> Ian Taylor was involved in that. Has it got anything to do with what had happened the previous week? Because Taylor did something like that when, when Shearer got sent off. He is correct for three points. Yeah, here's the answer from oh, Dion Dublin himself. It was all about the uh, Alan Shearer sending off uh, when we played him uh, at Newcastle when uh, Ian Taylor rubbed his head, not believing that he got sent off, to be honest. And uh, we decided to do it again uh, on match days. Calderwood and Shearer together. And the free kick given against Shearer. Oh, it's going to be more than that. A yellow card's coming out, and that means red. Total disbelief at St James's Park. <laughs> Everyone bemused here. <laughs> <laughs> so Dublin was copying Ian Taylor's astonished reaction when Alan Shearer was controversially sent off against Villa in the opening match of the season. Andy Cole recently aimed a savage attack at Shearer, but sadly he missed by a good ten yards. <laughs> And at the end of that round, David's team have <laughs> no points, and Gary's team have ten.
It's sensory deprivation time now for our regulars as we play Field the Sportsman. David and Jonathan first this week, please. It's hardly worth it, is it, really? It's hardly worth it, really, is it? He stands up and goes out into the middle. How many times? <laughs> <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? Okay, start tampering now. <laughs> it wasn't me, the floor squeak. <laughs> Hang on, where are you? Because I'm, I'm over here, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the parson's nose. <laughs> There's something sort of long. He's let thing. himself go a bit. Be too long, then. Jonathan. Sweet Jonathan George. <laughs> Have you seen one like this before? <laughs> Is it... It's Dion! <laughs> I feel the size of his bones! <laughs> Don't be an Australian. <laughs> it's not a cricket bat, is it? Well, I wouldn't know, would I? Well, obviously not. <laughs> Is he wearing shins or anything? Oh, you better let him down! <laughs> oh, I hate the feeling of man's oh, hair. Yeah. You do it. <laughs> It's got a stick, hold it. Is, uh, is, um, is it croquet? It must be that, yeah. It's be is croquet. it a croquet player? Can what that be? Well, it's it's, oh, it's got to be English, is it English champion oh. or world champion or he must European be champion going, going. or Olympic English champion, champion or... German champion. French, it's got to be French. Going, going. <laughs> it is, in fact, oh, there has it Reg Bamford, the British Open champion. Yes, he knew, he knew Reg. Sorry, but he did everything else. <laughs> I wanted to give it to you, but you, you didn't say British Open. Gary and Rory, oh, if you could take your again. places, please. Must be cat. We do it again. again. We do it again. Oh. Mm -hmm. It's not very Irish name, Campes, eh, is it? Well, my mother is. She's a Murphy. Oh, is that Irish? I see. Prince oh, really? of Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, we are the I'm world. Because I don't think we're going to... <laughs> <laughs> OK, can we have our second Very mystery listen. guest, please? Start now. I hope you guys have got some money. Oh. <laughs> 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 Rory's on something. Rory, take oh, it. God, sorry, missing out some. He's on something. I wish I was on it. He's two feet off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> guys, oh, aim God. high. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> it's Sir Douglas Bader. <laughs> 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 That's right, it's a sport <laughs> Zimmer frame. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, a, it's a wet... It's wet. What a laugh, that is. Is it Glenn Miller? Hiya, hiya, fellas. Is it that French golfer gone all the way? Yeah. <laughs> diving a diving ball. Ball. Diver. A diver. Brilliant. Yeah. We yeah. need... What do you need? Uh, can't be Greg Laganis. Who's it? famous for well. diving? We need... Ginola! Chris Snow. <laughs> We need at least the event and the level at which he's uh, won. Well, about 18 inches, I think. <laughs> British springboard champion. Yeah. The sort of. It's a springboard event, but which one? Um, <laughs> that might be a lovely wedding photo. The... No. <laughs> <laughs> it was, in fact, yeah. Antonio yeah. Ali, Good the European you. three metre yeah. springboard champion. <laughs> To feel up naked man, <laughs> Sullivan, and you invite me on this show. <laughs> <laughs> okay, at the end of that round, David's team have no points, and Gary's team still have ten. Oh, <laughs> right, we end as usual with the name game. The team in front goes first, which uh, is hold on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gary's team. That's right. As many names as you can in the next ninety seconds, starting now. 
Oh, uh, drug taking no. allegedly rugby player, English captain. D um, the Lallio, Lawrence Lallio. Good indeed. Uh, crappy Spurs player, used to be a crappy Wimbledon player, crappy uh, Liverpool player as well. <laughs> Named after something you shave with. Oh, oh, um, Razor, Razor, uh, Razor, Neil Razor, Razor. Yeah, yeah but but Minister, Minister of Sport. sport. Kate Howie. Howie. Um, Howie. Howie. This is a woman who changed her name so she doesn't refresh the parts of Will Carly. Julia Carly. No. Julia Carly. Julia Carly. Julia the first part of the expression as a duck's, a, a duck's arsehole. <laughs> Tiger's, <laughs> Tiger's Bramble. Tiger's Bramble, very good, eh? <laughs> um, Spanish, for, um, Spanish for Henry. Enrique. Enrique, yeah, very good. And it's a bit of a, um, a um, um, someone, you, someone who um, sponges drinks off you. Don't something drink. My cousin. Off you. Your cousin. No, 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 not Enrique. Uh, <laughs> not Enrique, my cousin. It's. Um, That's a Scottish guy. Um, oh, Ponce. Yeah, the, oh, this is a good one. You uh, love, this, love this, it. This, yeah. <laughs> this is this is a horse whose name sounds like a question to inquire who has contributed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel that we can wisely this occasion jointly by fellow travellers. Do you think the same um, length of time as us by any chance, Nick? Yes, I would have thought so. Are you sure about that? Yes, I would have thought so. OK. <laughs> you're however long it takes. <laughs> <laughs> OK, Jonathan, you're 90 seconds. Are you really going to time this? <laughs> of course I am. Even by your standards, that's feeble. Don't, don't worry. <laughs> you're 90 seconds, start now. American tennis player Slaphead has been bonking uh, Slaphead. Uh, Slaph 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 yeah, that's right. OK, yeah, Mr Posh Spice. Back Mr. Back Post Spice, there you go. Uh, oh, if you like this man, you would like a Dilaga. You, you like a Dilaga, you like this man. He's a rugby player, he likes to kick him eye. Julia Heineken. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his second name is a popular drink of the sort in the Lager family. I've got no idea. You must know! <laughs> it's a rugby player! What's the matter? Oh, man, OK, this one's first name Who's like Mr. For? Finstone. Second name, Sorry. if there were two of you, he's a golfer. And if there were two of you, you would be hay, and you'd make a lovely, if you don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> First name's like Flintstone. Fred, yeah, yeah second name, two of you together would be a. What a lovely. No, we're not couple. what a lovely. Yeah. There couple you go, there you go. Couple. Okay, this one, first name, ice cold in. Second name, Henry VIII with one of these. <laughs> come on, Gaza. wait, come on, what's wrong? First name, ice cold in. Gaza. No! <laughs> Where do you grow up? <laughs> Did your mother smoke during pregnancy or something? <laughs> ice cold in is the name of a mother. <laughs> Yeah, if you're a cockney and you like to eat this fella, you would like him in jelly. He's jellied. All <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, this second one is the king of the, 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 king of the monkey world and he lives near a typhoon. <laughs> He's an American wrestler. Ten. First nine. 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 Eight. 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 Seven. <laughs> six. Five. Four. Three. three two, two. First name was a penis. Second name, a creamy Christmas <laughs> eve. Jonathan, welcome, Jonathan, welcome to teaching the remedial class, mate. <laughs> Unfortunately, you gave up on two, so we have to take two points off your... Take them all! But if I give it to them... <laughs> so you're down to one point, I'm afraid. <laughs> Which means... Wait, 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 wait! Sorry. You don't know the result yet! <laughs> don't ruin it for people! <laughs> well, fingers crossed! <laughs> So, Gabe's team have one point, but yes. Yes. the winners this week are Gary's team with 15. <laughs> so, our thanks to David, Jonathan and David, Gary, Rory and Junior. My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. There's another helping of the Think It's All Over after the break, but just so you can plan ahead, plan to have your fat one on the soft thing tomorrow night and enjoy Room 101, Have I Got News For You and Two Pints of Lager, tomorrow from 9 on UKTVG2.